So, viewers, we are back for Podcast 25, Brenny. Hey! How you doing, big man? Brilliant, pal. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I've missed you. Good thing, I keep the podcast. Nice to, nice to be virtually isolated away from you for a change. As man, isn't it? <laughs> so, I'm well. All the, all the jumpies into the pump will be ending up absolutely... Uh, <laughs> Absolutely, uh, uh, drunk to their minds. So, I guess yes. it's nice to get in a box and say it again. It wasn't good. And obviously, we have a little bit of a break. Uh, reason being, you know, when lockdown kind of ended, so it's kind of need to congratulate us going to the boozer, can they, Brenny? Uh, maybe. Uh, so, I know you've had a, well, me personally, I had a wee couple of pints up in Cromer. Uh, uh, we've been doing a cold ship. Uh, obviously, as you call it, I've been on the coast and stuff. I've been on the Russian, what built it up that way. So, I, I speak good. Come on, I tell for a couple of pints of yarrow, fine meals a couple of times. I have I've done all right, I've done all right since uh, the last time we spoke online. We have indeed, mate. So, listen, let's tell the viewers what I've got lined up because we've got an absolute belter. Uh, we did promise you that we were going to try and uh, get bigger guests on. And uh, through our widespread uh, cultural mass appeal, um, Drygate <laughs> reached out to us tonight. <laughs> and uh, we've got Chris with Drygate coming up. He's going to, re- uh, he's going to review this way. Mm. What's it, what is it, Brenny? It's a, black, a 10% ABV Black Forest Gatto Imperial Milk Stout. Boom. Night, nightmare of Cake. Oh, 2001. Don't, or 2021, sorry. Don't, don't spoil the, the cake reference because. Well, I won't, I won't, I won't, I've, I've got, I've made sure I've got, I made sure I've had a wee, uh, a wee recap on it. It's been a few Good. years since I've seen any of, any of that. Uh, I will no spoil it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got a, a, a wee golden ale from Simple Things Fermentation. Uh, Brenny, looking forward to that. That's going to be a nice yeah, wee well, cleanser, I think. I love good Glasgow Southside Brewer. Uh, really been, really enjoyed the beers that I've tasted from them. Um, great scene at the moment, um, really enjoyable, loads of fresh beers that are out, um, been brilliant, been brilliant. That'll be good, and last but not least mate, we've got a cryopop IPA called Wumper from oh. Baskerland Brewing Man now. Baskerland oh. hold a record for being the only brewer so far on the podcast that made me bulk. <laughs> Sorry. Well, let's hope the Wumper does they do that, let's hope the Wumper does they do that. Uh, Aye, but listen, it's a redemption tonight, hopefully, for Pascal and Brune, so it should be should be a good laugh. I don't know about you, I'm really looking forward to it, mate. I am, probably. I always look forward to a beer. <laughs> uh, also, also I, like your, I like your looking resplendent tonight in the yeah, Zoyden. I thought, I thought it was the first one back, and it's a nice sunny day outside. Um, I would put on a nice cotton T-shirt, so I've got your, I've got your Zoyden designed T-shirt for that way. We reviewed for the Gangstar of Brewery. Um, so I, I thought it's like this one rather than a polo shirt or, a, or anything else. So I, decent, mate. Decent. First um, time I've it First time I've ever owned it. Oh. comments. End of the comments, like, subscribe. Uh, we'll be picking out a comment of the, of the week or a comment of the month and you'll get a free card um, yes. if you do that. And uh, obviously, Brenny, we do have a big anniversary coming up uh, soon over yeah, the next month. Um, first anniversary of the podcast. Yeah, and we're going to put something really special together for the viewers, aren't we, mate? Aye, definitely, definitely. It's, 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 it's nice to give a wee bit back, isn't it? 100%. So, we've got a new special guest today. Um, one of the Glasgow, a Glasgow regular now for a few years since the Dry Gate Brewing opened up. Um, hopefully, maybe tell a bit more about yourself because I've not actually spoken to him personally. So, but I do know that he's big on the Glasgow scene and he's Chris from Drygate Brewing. So we're really lucky to have him and he's going to discuss this new uh, beer that he's got out um, and he's going to sit and drink it with us. So I have a really look forward to seeing Chris at Drygate who's going to be joining us next. Just him here. He's here. He's the man. He's from the Glasgow introducing that is Drygate. It is Chris. Welcome to the show, Chris. Oh, well, how are we doing? Not bad. Now, all it took was one tweet from Bill Conbrenny's podcast. Obviously, we've got mass worldwide appeal. We didn't have to ask Chris. Chris actually seen that and he wanted involved. 
didn't you, Chris? You said I say, you know, you, the draw, the power of social media, the, you just can't say no to that kind of celebrity when it when it crosses your path. Exactly, and uh, the feeling is mutual. That's that, that's just what I say to Brenny every day, mate. I text him that in the morning, mate. Um, <laughs> now, before we take, uh, get this uh, lovely beer cracked open, which is very, very yeah. good, we're going to link to everything throughout the show, obviously, the images, everything will come up for you. But it'd be uh, remiss of us not to ask you, uh, Chris, I mean, how did you kind of get into beer? How have you kind of came to be what you are, you know? Um, so I, I grew up around beer. My dad was a, um, still is, my dad's a home brewer, a pretty good one. Um, and he was on the Guild, the Guild of Judges. Um, so, like, I, I grew up around brewing, you know, I've got memories of being at the Bass Brewery as a kid, you know, wow. going on holiday. We went to such exotic places, you know. Uh, <laughs> going to the Bass Brewery on holiday, my dad stealing yeast. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, going to, like, um, going to Black Sheep in Yorkshire. And they're big, uh, they've got these big slate fermenters, big slate fermentation tanks, because they're Yorkshire cubes, which are nonsense things wow. um, so yeah I, I very much kind of grew up around it um, and kind of started working in, started working in bars started working in restaurants I did my uh, did my W sets my wine qualifications and then uh, running craft beer bar and started doing the, the Cicerone thing and when I started doing that I started seeing all those things that I'd grown up with my dad like going to well going to Paisley Beer Festival and well, there was Michael Jackson books that were in the house. Like a lot of the books I used to study for Cicerone were my dad's books. Uh, so I, it's just, it all just kind of fell into place. It's like, oh yeah, that's all, that's all kind of makes sense. And that's all, uh, that's all feeds back. And like working in the bars, I met, um, met the, the boys from Drygate, met Sam, Matt and Rob. And uh, when, the, when this job came up, it just seemed like a, a natural thing to do. That's amazing. Can I just touch on something already? You've just mentioned the yeah. Michael Jackson there. Is that the yeah. guy that wrote that, the, the famous malt whiskey book, the Michael Jackson? That's the guy, yeah. Uh, he's the, the guy that categorised European beer for the first time. So he had 73 different beer styles. I think he got drunk in Belgium one day and <laughs> just started wondering about writing things down. Awesome, man. I'm going to actually link to that. I hope you don't mind. And we'll be linking to everything that Chris is talking about. Uh, so, so, Brenny, I think it's quite safe to say there's a big tick there. Uh, Chris passes the test, doesn't he, when it comes to credentials? I do, I Now, you do work for a bit of an institution around these parts, Chris. Uh, and we've all linked, obviously, Drygate throughout the show. Um, we do have viewers that are not based in Scotland, obviously, maybe down south and also European, etc. So just for those guys, uh, can you tell us a wee bit about maybe like the origins and the history of Drygate? Um, that'd be really good. Cool. Um, so the history, Drygate is the oldest street in Glasgow. Um, it was where the cathedral, which is around the corner, where they would come to access the water, which is the, the lady well, which is around the back of the brewery. Um, so there's an argument that there's been brewing done uh, on that site since about the year 900. Um, we've not been there that long. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we've been brewing since about 2014. Um, it was initially a joint venture between uh, Tenants and Williams Brothers. Um, and they retain a stake investment in the business. Um, yeah, brewing out of an old box factory. In well park and the glorious historic east end of glasgow uh, we're a small team there's only there's only about 10 of us i think all told um producing yeah off a 25 head kit um yeah I think that's we've, class that's class yeah. so the obviously do, 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 for the other viewers as well that are not from here obviously dry gate i mean uh, could you just tell us where you're based? Because I, I, I want to cut to it straight away, mate. Because I've got an unbelievable tap room. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I've got arguably the finest tap room in Scotland, right? So could you just tell us a wee bit about where you're based and, and uh, that kind of stuff as well? And, 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 and can people visit you at the moment, obviously, given the, the current situation? All right, so we're, a, we're an old box factory. Um, seven East End, just around the back of the cathedral in the necropolis. Um, Beautiful tap room with um, 
glass windows into the brew house. So you can watch watch the guys making your beer as you sit and eat. Uh, we've got some great food. We've got um, an event space upstairs, which we sadly can't use at the moment. Um, but it had some great gigs on there. We usually work with Kelly Connections um, in kind of January, and we've had some amazing artists uh, playing up there. We've got a great big terrace for a beautiful sunny day like this. It's, it's a proper wee sun trap as well. Yep. Super. Uh, so we're not... I'll be able to comment. See if anybody has they been up to Necropolis or up to the cathedral recently. What do you do is a wee tour slot in the dry gate and force yourself up and go a wee wander, run about the cathedral, into the Necropolis. We wander about because every time you go up, you'll find something different. It's a oh. beautiful part of the world and the views up there are incredible. So uh, that's my advice for any viewers local who have no other been up. Because the amount of people in Glasgow that have never actually walked about the Necropolis and stuff is incredible. So uh, just get yourselves out there, folks, and use it as a wee excuse to go and visit Drygate Brown because it's, it's a really good space uh, in itself. But all about where it is, is as you say, it's, like, it's basically the heart of Glasgow. It really is the heart of Glasgow. It's uh, where, where everything started, the cathedral, the village all around about it. You get the Proven Lordship up the up the high street, uh, which is the oldest building in uh, Glasgow. So there's woods up there to go and see. And um, so I can of can recommend it enough and book a wee tour slot in the drive for but a lunch and, uh, a bit of lunch and a few beers. Before before you can book your lunch in, go and date it all, then book another tour slot at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but I wanted to just ask you something there, because I see that, what you were saying there, so when the guys are in dry get you're actually getting them, you can actually see you guys doing what you're doing, you can actually see the brew. Ah, yep. That's class. I think it's a real, like, I, to really make the connection between this thing and my glass was made by that guy there. Yep. Like, the, there's something really powerful about that, and like being around the smells of all of it, being around... Just the whole process of seeing it, you, it's such an immersive thing. You to really under to really make the connection between what they're drinking and the process of getting it there. It's it's a great experience. It's a lovely place. One of my favourite places. Just sitting there. So you could really, you could actually say, you know, you're you're kind of getting just by booking into the tap room, you kind of are getting a tour of the place, aren't you? You're kinda, oh, yeah. you're, you're, you're seeing that, you know. But most importantly, you know, you go on a wee tour, and it was I love a brewery tour, right? You get a wee bit at the end, but you're, you can actually sit there for two hours and actually just get a massive sample, can't you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a crack and bottle shop. I don't think you should uh, be, be knocking back the, the chance to uh, put, uh, let them know how good the bottle shop is as well, because at the end of the night, you can walk away with some fantastic beers from all over the world. It's, uh, and that's quite an experience as well, because it's really well laid out the bottle shop as well, from what I remember. Uh, the last time I was yeah. in, it was a few years later enough, but uh, aye. I'm gonna, I'll ask you. Uh, we've kind of found out a wee bit recently. Has um, it? Yeah, just because we were sitting on so much stock over the last year, so there's not so much there at the moment, but. It's good. It's good. Uh, I'll actually need to do my tour like I was talking about because it's been a couple of years since I've been up to see you, so I'll be doing that myself, actually. Aye, I'll be doing it with you, mate. Aye, this one. <laughs> this one. Hey, what's we're, not, we're, we're not currently running tours at the moment, uh, just aye. with kind of COVID regs. Um, the, the brewery's pretty much a clean room right now, um, as it should be, you know. Ah, but uh, cool. uh, as soon as as soon as Big Nicola says we can, we'll get we'll get the tours on the go again. Or yeah, actually, cool. more when Dave says we can, <laughs> 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 we'll get the tours on the go again. We're going to we're going to touch. As you know, we've got brew. We've got questions for viewers. We've actually got quite a few yeah. tonight, actually. Uh, but I do want to just ask you one part of that. Um, how important has it been for you recently, mate? See, given the fact that obviously you've that all the pubs have been shut, the tap rooms not been all, uh, closed. How important has it been for you that you actually have still been able to get brews into supermarkets? I mean, that must be great for you. And I'm, and I know you'll be sympathetic with everybody else, but but it must be good for you to have had that just to fall back on. It's, in, a, in a very real sense, it's kept us alive in the last year. You know, it's good. it's was kept us trading. Um, what has been really nice to see on the other side of that as well is, is our own kind of e-commerce and our, our own on online shop went huge. You know, it went from doing a few orders a week to being a couple hundred a day at one point, which was really lovely to see just people wanting to support us. But um, yeah, no, no in, a, in a very real way, kind of having those those supermarket listings is what's kept us ticking over. 
good. No, that's good, mate. It's interesting what you've just said there about people wanting to support you because one yeah. thing that Drygate is renowned for throughout the locality here is uh, supporting uh, you know, people throughout our community as well. I know it's a real big thing for you guys, uh, you know, the Absolutely. community aspect of what you're doing. Like, like us, we, we, we kind of do the same as well. So can you maybe just expand on that, you know, how, how important it is for you to be part of the community and support the community? Oh, absolutely. Like it's it's interesting. It's not something we've ever like sat down and said, you know, this this is our ethos. It's just something that has has kind of happened that we've all all wanted to do. And you know, I I firmly believe that if you have any kind of platform at all, it, you need to use that to feed back into your community and bring other people with you. You know, and things that we've done, they've often come from members of the team of you know. We, we opened the doors for Christmas Day to feed anyone who couldn't, you know, anyone who couldn't get a meal for whatever reason. Um, we've done a can for a can scheme uh, with from Chapel Food Bank. So if people brought in donations for the food bank, we'd swap them out cans of beer. Um, we've done Beer Mix Glasgow, which is a, a beer festival that hopefully we'll have running again sometime soon. And then that again goes back to food banks. Um, but all these things have come from within the team. You know, it's it's never been a, a kind of, oh, this is a strategic top-down decision. You know, it's it's been a, this is something we've all kind of instinctually driven to do. Uh, I think being so involved in, in food and the supply of food and, and everyone being so passionate about that, when you, you see that's a really simple way to help people and it's something that we can do. So... Let's do it, you know. That is superb, really is. It's, uh, great hear, it's great to hear that uh, it's, uh, it's, at the, it's at the core of the values of the team. Um, so that's, that's been a way to hear that everything, everything comes from that rather than um, some sort of corporate. Because obviously uh, you, just have, you just do have the tie-in with tenants. How big is the tie-in with tenants, Chris? Um, I mean, the way I often describe it is the, the landlords. You know, they, they, they gave us the building, uh, they've retained the stake investment in the business, but, um, and we're quite lucky in a way that we can use their distribution networks. Yep. So we can get our beer further than Craig and John can drive in a day, yep. which is what holds back a lot of smaller brewers. Of course. Um, but other than that, I, in terms of kind of day-to-day -day running of the business, we don't really have That's great. That's great. Yeah. So, I'm just going to move it on. I hope you don't mind, Brenny. Um, in terms of a uh, community, what you've just been talking about, there's a uh, wee thing you've actually made a mistake on there, uh, Chris. What's that? Um, yeah, well, obviously, uh, Brenny, but at least a beer they called it podcast. You've obviously <laughs> spelled it wrong. Right? You meant, uh, where was the key in the end of that? There's obviously, <laughs> they're, they're, they're obviously no bit of copyright infringement. You, exactly. You, you, you know, they know, they know oh. they're not even getting, they know they're getting chased for a bit of the money on it, you know? Don't want to mess with your lawyers, guys. You know, I don't know what they're like. Fair play, mate. Fair play. <laughs> uh, but all joking aside, um, I, I have to say, honestly, well done on that. Uh, community aspect couldn't be bigger. Uh, no, coming to dry right, again. Yeah. Just echo what Brenny said there. It comes from within. Comes from within the team. That, that is class. Um, that leads me on to the next question. Now, when I. When, we do send some questions over to you. And when I asked this one, I thought, I, I, I'm open up and I kind of lion's den. I'm conscious of the fact that I really want to try this beer. Right. <laughs> we're, we're going to review later on tonight. It's a Nightmare of Cake 2021 edition. Uh, it's a Black Forest Gato Imperial Milk Stout. 10% beers. Um, but where does this fit into the categories? Because obviously I know you've got like your core range, occasional, small batch, spectrum. Whereabouts does this fit into your kind of your, your categories, categories there, Chris? So, um, it's kind of an annual tradition. Now, um, the first one we brewed, we brewed for our fifth birthday. Um, and we made a big deal about our fifth birthday. Um, we had big parties going on in the venue and lots of things happening. And it was part of that was like, well, instead of making a birthday cake, <laughs> let's make a birthday cake beer. Um, which was great. It was a whole lot of fun to brew because we could do it. Like the first edition, stupid. And I think just every dollar flurry for we could get our hands on in it. Um, 
Yeah, but it was great. Everyone loved it. It's loads of fun to make. So we've made it a kind of annual. Every year on our birthday, we'll do a nightmare of cake. And they're always slightly different, but kind of, they're always loosely kind of cake themed. Um, so last year's was a, was a kind of big barrel aged, brandy barrel aged nonsense. Uh, and this one's a Black Forest Gato. We've gone for some loads of cherry and dark chocolate. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, let, 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 before we before we open it, before we open it, Brenny, right? Let's just just calm down, all right? Right. <laughs> I have been looking forward to this moment, right? Since it's not you so, building something up, Bunko. It's definitely oh, mate, not you building something up. But we're going to record it in my garden, and then when when you agreed to come on, Chris, uh, we've obviously rescheduled it, and it's unlike a beer like this of that description to sit in my fridge for four days without getting <laughs> well tanned, right? Um, so. Before we sample some, eh, I would like to know if it's okay just about the wee story about it. You've given us a touch on it there, mate. Now, you've mentioned the word cake. Now, there's some, cake can be quite dangerous, according to some sources on the internet. Well, you know, cake is a made-up drug. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, listen, sorry. Will we get it cracked open, man? Yes. Let's yes, go please. for it. Is there a special way to pour this, Chris? Um, nah, you don't need to hard pour it or anything. It's, with the amount of booze that's in it, you're not going to get much by way of head retention anyway. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about oh, that. Man. Careful, it don't spill any. It smells phenomenal of yours, man. Now, we got this at the wee beer shop, obviously. I mean, Chris will be able to tell you where else. You can get it, obviously, yeah. on... I'm assuming you can get it on your website, Chris. Get it on our website, um... Niall, the wee beer shop's always been a great kind of supporter of us, and he, I think he actually got in touch with me before I even put it in the mail out. It's like, if you've got a nightmare cake, give me some. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think you're very good lad about we're, 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 we're there twice weekly minimum, because that's quite local yeah. with us. So uh, it's quite, quite handy, great resource. Great to see him doing so well as well. Um, oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think he runs it really well as well. Do you know, he, he sort of, he, he seems to have a good work-life balance in the sense that the shops itself is all open, but he, he's obviously back on the website as well, which is good to see, you know. Um, but uh, he's, a, he's a good lad, Neil. The, get, the great thing about Neil as well, he's very educational when it comes to beers. Um, the, the, I'm just having a look at what I would like to do, mate, before we have, that, that, that's aroma, oh. right? If you could, if you could run, could you run through the ingredients in this? Because the aroma is just. Brady, have you tasted it already? Aye. I'm not for you, Tom. I'm getting drink that. I'm for you, Tom, man. Got to the chase of it. Um, I mean, do you, how much detail do you want? Do you want me to go right into the malt bill on it? Do you want me to break it right down? Well, um, I must go women's terms. Play those women's terms. Let, let's taste it. Let's taste it, and then we'll go into it. Because we're because we're going to be we're not going to just tan this one. It's a savour, isn't it? I, I wouldn't advise necking it. No. <laughs> so any cheers, lads? Yes. Okay. Cheers. Oh. I go with the cherry. I I mean you have nailed a black forest gal, obviously. Oh my. <laughs> That's the that is amazing. Listen, we're not going to score it too quickly, but we do want to, we want to talk about it quite a bit, man. But it is that is that do you know what that is, Brenny? Yes. Without being uh, naked, it is tannable, sippable tannable. That's what that is. <laughs> that is tannable. Unfortunately, we've got a habit of tanning things at 10% that ends up making us messy. I was looking forward to it being a shearer. Uh, you know that way? It's, it's, it's one of the ones that I, I could have definitely I, I've been doing me sitting in your garden and sharing it because uh, so, a, a full one of that's uh, it's going to yes. start the night off well. Would this be classed as an occasional for you, this beer? Um, yeah, I mean, it's only so it's brewed on the small kit, so we've got a wee three heck. Um, gets 300 liter. Um, yeah, the yield on this will be nowhere near that because it's got so much malt in it. 
Uh, so it's very, very small amount. So this is maybe 70, 80 bottles of it. A couple of kegs, one which went into uh, Sylvan uh, up in Woodlands Road and the other one which went into a tap room. Um, and it's only ever brewed once. Uh, we, we do a different variety of it every year, but this beer will never be made again. Happy birthday, uh, Greg. I feel, I feel quite uh, honoured to be drinking it now. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I'm just nipping in and I'm going to basically take Neil's entire stock of this. <laughs> I, don't think oh, he's not, I don't think he's getting any left. He hasn't he? No, he doesn't. But it's, uh, it's, I can see why. You can actually... <laughs> Mate, I wouldn't mind getting into the ingredients in it because, what, in fact, we actually get a viewer a uh, question about um, from Jake Balls, who are another conglomerate of beer drinkers with massive, massive... Um, with a ma social massive media pool. Yeah. Their, their Facebook social media pool is massive, isn't it? Yeah, it is indeed. If you're not yeah. part of it, Chris, I'll send you the link, actually, once we're finished. But they asked, they asked how difficult do you find it to make, the, make sure the flavour profile combines all the kind of elements stroke ingredients uh, included because obviously I mean that that just tastes so refined to me Brenny man right I know all credit to that goes to Pete who's an absolute genius for these things um, it's got a lot in it I mean the it's a huge malt bill it's nine different malts mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. um, so it's a huge huge malt bill and that's where a lot of the complexity and a lot of the richness of it comes from Plus cherry fruit, cherry puree, cacao nibs, uh, bit of vanilla, and then we've got a few kind of essences. There's a little bit of peanut butter essence, although it's it is not uh, allergen free. It's got some peanut butter essence, some coconut, and some marshmallow. That you'll not really pick those flavours up individually. It's really just to round it out, make it feel like cake, make it feel kind of that almost kind of chewy way. Um, from a Brewing point of view, it starts at a ridiculously high gravity. I think it starts at something like 1150 um, and brews down. So it's the, the final gravity on it's at 1080, which is where like a lot of beers would start. Um, so it's a really thick, viscous guy, even with even at that 10%, because it just starts with like so much richness in it. Um, there's nothing really, I mean, there's no real secret method to it. It's a step mashed, that protein rest, and it just to develop that, but it's not, you know, it, it's mostly just loads and loads of it. Hey man, it is, man, it is so, man, you can just taste uh, every day. Can I ask in the development, Chris, do you do? So would you start, I know you are saying it's a, a small batch with the amount you've actually managed to out of the, the brew itself, but would you do a smaller version of that before you try to get it to that stage, or is it just straight away go for it and brew it? Um, a lot of times it's just straight away go for it. We do have the wee pilot kit which we use for, um, we do use for, for menu development, yeah, but often when it's a three head kit, a lot of the time, um, our Spectrum series, which um, we, I think you spoke about earlier, Billy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the Spectrum series, which is brewed, brewed on that small kit, is very much an experimental kind of, what do we want to make today? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of mad styles that the brewers have read about in some Lithuanian journal that they found. That, yeah, you know, uh, so that allows us to be quite kind of experimental and just go, right, what works? And a few of those beers that we have done on that kit that have been well received, we have scaled up and done big brews of. Right. Um, I love that. I love the fact that you're basically using the Spectrum beers. Obviously, you're putting all that knowledge with you guys in terms of your smaller team, and then you're picking like the best bits of that, and he's and it's like, right, that works, that works, that works, and you're like, right, you know, we can make a really, really, really nice uh, commercial beer out of this, if that makes sense. Um, the, I had a wee look on the website as well and speaking, it's like I want to try the Blackberry Gosey, honestly. Uh, aye, that just... That's a good one. Aye, uh, and I, I would urge people to look at the website, drygate.com, because I noticed these are so reactive on there, so you just put it up there, but it's only up there for maybe a couple of days at a time and then it's gone. 
Um, I didn't actually realise this was so exclusive, yours. Uh, I do apologise about that. <laughs> um, but it just shows you, um, you know, Brenny, we, we, we decided to do a podcast, we've ended up with this one. It feels as if fate, everything's been aligned tonight, Chris. Um, yeah, I, can on, I, can, I can honestly say, right, I've, we've actually reviewed the Mocker Stout on, uh, on the show before, and it scored very highly uh, when you were part of the Beer Festival, etc., and it Excellent. was, you know, it was it was stunning. But that's that, that's this is different level, man. This is I'm already thinking here, Brenny. Brenny, go yes. for it. So you want my scores, etc. I forgot what order do we do it, and it's been that long since we've done one. I'll I'll, I'll do it first, mate. Right? No, I mean, just what, what do we do? Would you buy it again? Oh, aye, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Chris is looking looking like his hero. Chris is looking quite evil all of a sudden, mate, as we do this. He's like, <laughs> so, Brenny, listen, I'll go first, mate, right, just so okay. you can follow it. So, uh, would I buy that again? If I had the opportunity to buy that again, I would do. Um, I'm not going to be so rude as to jump onto a wee beer shop or any of these other places that Chris has told you where you can buy it. Get If you can get a bottle of it, buy it yourself. Um, it's, it's a stunning beer, man. Uh, would you say shit? Obviously, you're not going to say shit, but you definitely, if the opportunity arose and you were in a place such as Dry Gate and you got to maybe get a wee third or two thirds, you definitely have another one at the end of the night. Uh, you definitely maybe share it with somebody that you were trying to introduce uh, that style to. So it brings me to the score. Oh, the best Imperial uh, barrel. Uh, oh, the best Imperial. See, that was more of a nail was uh, All the Leaves Are Brown by uh, Tempest. I gave that a nine. I know it was a brown ale. I know viewers from cutting, but that's probably... I'm gonna, I'm not going to mess about, man. It's a, <laughs> it's a fucking 9.5, man, that. It's a 9.5 out of 10. Honestly, that is phenomenal, man. Well done, Bilko. Well done. Yeah, what are you doing? So, would you buy again? If you could buy again, I'd buy it. Um... Because I would, I would love to show other people that it would be a share. It would be a share for me, um, because I think it's a style that uh, is quite rare. Um, it's, it's a black forest cattle and a stout Aye. and a milk stout. There's no other way to describe it. That is what it does. So, in the description on the bottle, is exactly what happens. Um, my, for me, I do enjoy it. I'm liking it. I wouldn't go as high as yourself, Bilko. Uh, but that's not that's nothing against Chris and the Dry Gate team. Um, it's more about my tastes and my sort of. I'm not really into the high sort of mixes of beers, but um, I'll get a nine out of ten because it's uh, a stunning beer. Uh, <laughs> and, and you can tell you can tell that there's a lot of thought goes into it. And ah, I mean, what more do you want? Everything you read on that, the nightmare of cake. I don't know why, I don't know where we're getting the nightmare of cake, but uh, there's no, no much of a nightmare going on there, Chris. It's, it's a really nice beer. I think it would be a bit of a nightmare if you had maybe more than more than two or three of them, mate, to be fair, man. It would be, <laughs> it would be but it's just so filling the body. The body is just phenomenal. It does exactly what it says on the description. The packaging, as you'll see on the screen viewers, the packaging is just phenomenal. The story we've heard about it. Uh, it's definitely the, the for me. It's you know it's what well, it is now officially Brenny the best stout that I've ever marked on the show. And I'm not just there you go, it ask there you go. There um, you go. I, I thought I thought right, Neil's got it on. There's only six bottles yet. I thought we're having some of that, man. And I'm really, really, really glad we did, man. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what nightmare nightmare cake 2022 is it. Can you can you put me down for a bottle of that, please, mate? <laughs> Get you on the list now. It's safe to say, viewers, that we like this quite a lot. Um, and I think we'll both agree here, but anyway, we want to have a wee dig here at Chris, don't we? We're reviewing another two beers after that. How many do you anything after that? <laughs> I, I, I get hot flushes here. I get hot flushes <laughs> and put a glass of water. It's like, what's happening there? It's, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to me away. I was just saying that just as we were joining on camera. That I would much prefer just a small, small amount of that because a bottle was wasted on me because it is so rich, it is so lovely, the body, it, but it is actually quite strong. I mean, I didn't actually appreciate the 10%. Eh, it's been a while. It has been a while since I've been, well, that's an absolute lie. The last time we were on cool shit, we were, we were 
absolutely three seal right, great enough shape. But anyway, anyway, yeah, it's, it's quite strong in the sense that that was my first beer of the night, and I felt the uh, woof get up, you know. That is. Yeah, it's deceptive. Like we uh, fermented quite cold. We fermented at about sixteen, um, which just kind of keeps those fuses down, so you don't really feel. You don't feel the ten percent until, as, as Billy Conley says, until you try and walk. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's actually uh, I did get a wee hot flush, maybe that's just my age. So that? <laughs> I, I, I did feel it, you know, that way. Like, I was fine just hitting down, then I've stood up and I was like, what? what the hell? I'm so was that the was that the temperature, sixteen degrees? Is that yeah. right? And do you think that really boosts the the kind of the, the, the strength or, or is it the flavours you do that? What, what, why, why do you do that at 16, per, 16 degrees? Sorry, 16 percent. Um, it, it just keeps the kind of the fermentation quite stable. It keeps mm -hmm. it quite subtle. Uh, so you don't end up with those big yeast dominant flavours. So you don't end up with like, yeah, that kind of rough uh, kind of brandy like alcohol flavour. Uh, there's, no hint, there's no there's no hint of the actual 10% at all. That's that's definitely something I think we should highlight. Um, all it all it is is, is <laughs> it's like that cake, cake white forest gal cake. Um, so sort of, I it's flavoursome, very flavoursome, but you don't get that like, right oh. at the end, right at the end there is a wee hint of it. Just the very last sort of I, I certainly think Aye. I think it, it warms up a bit, you'll pick up. Right, right at the end, it's almost like, oh, there is a wee, a wee kick there, but not, 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 over, not overly at all, you know, it's good. Yeah. I think if you had too many of them, man, you'd definitely be cooked and bombed, wouldn't you, man? Uh, uh, if you had a few of them. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm just... Uh, uh, do you know, I'm not going to lie to you, Chris, okay? Because obviously we've had the mocha, which is... I'm not going to like the mocha is like my go-to breakfast stout, right? And yeah, it's, quite, it's quite strong as well. But what, what I love about the mocha stout, which obviously it's another one. In fact, in fact, just for the viewers, can you can you tell us what that is a wee bit about that one? Just for the viewers, if they're not using right. the mocha. So on an oko, uh, it's a, a kind of core stout, six percent uh, mocha milk stout. Uh, it's one gold at the Scottish Beer Awards for the best out the last three years in a row. Um, deservedly so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's a beer I often throw in at tastings um, for, because well, you always get somebody who thinks they don't like beer um, and it's just a pure dessert of a beer. It's rich and smooth and sweet and you know, a lot of people assume stouts are going to be better. Um, but it's just a real dessert of the beer. It's beautiful. It's like a tiramisu almost. Uh, we use coffee from uh, Deer Green, uh, Venice Bell Chocolate, which is where the name comes from. Um, uh, it's just a really rich, thick, unctuous, beautiful stout. It is. It is indeed. And uh, the irony is, I can tell you, we've got friends over in Sweden who, like, when he, as soon as he sees that in his shop, he's like, oh, I'm having some of that. Uh, he, he really does. Uh, but, you know, I'll, t I'll tell you something, man. That is just, like, to the extreme. That, that is just phenomenal. I was nervous, Chris, I'm not going to lie here. And we were talking off camera, Brady, I was like, oh, we've got Drygate coming on. Because, I mean, I love, like, bare face, that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, yeah. how is it going to be to this, dare I say it, in fact, we'll, we'll ask you this question, actually, Chris. This has come in from one of our viewers, uh, Alan, a oh. good friend of the show. Um, how do you react to all these kind of craft beer? He, he said the word snobs. Uh, they, they, they class themselves as uh, experts. Uh, me and Brenny class them as wankers, right? <laughs> uh, these uh, craft beer snob guys that moan about the fact you've got beers in the supermarket. I mean, how does that... Because you must get that. You know, it I always think about like when you were in bands in the nineties, and you know anyone who was anyone who was on a CD, if you weren't just printing them out in a seven inch in your own house, you were a big sellout. No more <laughs> um, but one of one of the big things for us is like accessibility, and you know good beers for everyone, mm -hmm. and because of that, you it's 
we're never going to get good beer into places, into people who wouldn't drink the beer otherwise if it's not coming to them. You know, if, if you have to seek it out and you have to go into a dedicated craft beer shop, you know, there are people who are not going to be comfortable doing that. There are communities who are not going to be comfortable doing that. They are much more likely to pick something up when they're picking up their groceries and think, that's an amazing beer. You know, and it, it's, I think there is very much a kind of issue of, of accessibility there. And, aye, people are always going to move. Exactly. If somebody was to go to you and like say, oh, by the way, you know, this beer tastes like shit, but the bottom line is it doesn't. Because when you grab a beer face, la a beer face lager, and you compare it to the stuff of that ilk, it's fucking dynamite, mate. Do you know what I mean? It is really, really good. Um, I, yeah. I really like as well what you've done with the mango, with boogie stuff recently. I really like that as well. Um, again, got some pictures through of people just drinking that during the football. Love that. Um, and Disco Forklift, big fan of that. Uh, Brenny, obviously, the Orinoco. Um, as I said, mate, it's just, it's, mate, there's either good beer and bad beer. And, um, and I do apologise about using the W word there, but at the end of the day, if you're watching this and you are one of them, get the fuck. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> you've, you've got a charm school, right? You've got a charm school, right? I'm mad with, yeah. the, mad with the old nightmare on cake, mate. That's what I'm I, 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 I think you're, I think you're, you're, you're definitely, definitely getting a wee bit uh, higher. So... Mm. We can we can edit we can edit that we can edit bits and bobs of that. Out. <laughs> oh no, I don't cut that. I know. Exactly. It's funny. Um, so uh, I'd, I'd also like to ask you as well if it's all right, Chris. Uh, have you got any yeah. kind of really special uh, beers coming up that you could give us a wee hint on or tell us about um, that the viewers might like? We've just done a beer with a really stupid name that I've had to write down because I can never remember it. Um, we've just done a wild ferment turbid mash. Um, so it's turbid mash, 50% wheat malt, um, and then it's spent just under a year. And uh, I'm not sure if I can name the distillery or not, but in a, a cherry bourbon barrel um, aging out. So almost in a kind of goozy kind of uh, fashion. We decided we wanted to give it a really stupid long name. Um, so uh, Rob found an Edgar Allan Poe quote. This beer is called... It is by no means an irrational fancy that in a future existence we shall look in upon what we think of our present existence as a dream. He's Could a pint of that, big man. <laughs> Could you repeat that, please? I, mean, I don't know if I can. The one I name. The one I name. That. Give me that. I'll be having one of them when it comes out. And, is it, and, and, yeah. and I'm assuming that that's a... Is that like a small batch, that one? Or yeah, so yeah. it's... it's a barrel's worth so about 200 litres. Um, if we get the yield out of it, it'll go into big 750 sharing bottles. I'm really, really excited about trying that. The wild ferments are always... There's always a bit, wee element of danger with them, <laughs> um, which is always quite good fun. So, yeah, um, I had a, had a wee taste not... of it before I went into secondary, and it's tasting real good, so... Excited about that. I've been up the west coast a fair bit recently, but I had walking and stuff and just get up and spend a bit of time just there around it lot fine. And I was in fine ales and I finally got into trying their origins range, which sounds kind of similar. Yeah. Um, so I picked up a few of them, some phenomenal beers. I mean, uh, we were up, I was away with my dad and my brother. <laughs> And they totally dismissed it. <laughs> it was like that. They, they absolutely hated it. I was like, this, this is lovely. I was like, this is absolutely lovely beer. They're like, no, it's half. Then you should take that back. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about, you know? But uh, it sounds, sounds very similar. It sounds very similar to some of the ones they were doing. Habitual and home, I think it was. Uh, the their origin trench, Ian's been doing some amazing stuff for that. Um, but yeah, I think, like, being on the farm up there as well, there's a real just sense of it, of of that place and those beers. You know, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, there's some great I stuff. Mean, we did a black current one, which was amazing. I can't actually remember what that was called. It was the what was the one I gave you, Bunko? Oh, you gave uh, me the Wingate, phenomenal. Uh, the Wingate, uh, phenomenal. Uh, you gave me actually two or three of them, mate. 
Uh, yeah, I, it's phenomenal, just natural. And uh, I think mixed fermentation seems to be quite a big thing at the moment. And I'm loving the fact a lot of the viewers that watch this like that style. Um, so definitely um, uh, keep your eye out for the <laughs> from Drygate because uh, it sounds like. I'll send you the image. <laughs> <laughs> ask, how how did you just come about with the name? What what was it? Was it just that? There must be something behind that. Um, so it's an Edgar Allan Poe quote. Um, I, I'm not sure what the story is behind it, to be totally honest with you. But yeah, it's an Edgar Allan Poe quote. I think the guys just really liked it. And we were like, okay. Sure. Right, so let's jump on the, the craft beer, giving things stupidly long names. Uh, bandwagon. <laughs> I, think there's one, I, I think one thing uh, that this beer has proved to me and he, no, I already knew it that uh, I don't think you have jumped on the uh, in the bandwagon of uh, good beer. I think you've always produced good beer, Chris. Uh, and uh, I think just people need their eyes opened a wee bit. Uh, they sometimes get blo uh, blocked uh, through to the supermarket stuff, so to speak. Um, so uh, have we kissed his arse off, an arse off, Brenny? <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty sure we have. I so when are we getting the collaboration here? Obviously, we're available. For a collaboration here, Chris? Uh, I, again, when Big Nicholas says it's all right. You heard that first, new, new viewers. Uh, well, we'll be up there. Uh, so it's going to be a loser. What we'll be doing is we'll, be, we'll nip in, we'll, chase, we'll change all the podcast to K, Brenny. We'll do a permanent <laughs> marker up. We'll change it all to K. I tell you um, what, we'll do a cask version. Huh? Oh, yes. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, do you know something actually looking at the website again it's uh, drygate.com um, viewers if you haven't heard about them already um, you know get yourself on there a stunning range one thing I'll always say about Drygate as well Brenny and Chris as well in fact you're always uh, the price point is always very very good I think with Drygate very, that's um, a very good point Volko very yeah. good point I think uh, I think we do get lost in that sometimes I think uh, if you're talking about accessibility, affordability, Drygate is definitely one of those go-to brewers who everybody can afford a couple of cans at least um, and just try it, just try it. And there's, in the supermarkets we're talking about, I remember trying the, the Bareface Lager for the first time. Yeah. Um, and I go to Aldi. Remember Aldi used to do the, the they still do, Aldi and Little do the Scottish beer festivals. And I just came across it. I'd actually been in, I'd been in, uh, dry gate previously be, be, before I tried it sort of out the supermarkets as you will and I was like do you know that's brilliant that you're, you're in the the baby of Ireland Aldi you're going to get people just going do you know what I'll try that bare face lager I'll try that as a one off and once you try it they're going to be like that's lovely you know there's nobody going to turn and go oh I'm going to buy that again or whatever don't get me wrong you'll still get people going oh, I'll still go my TL or whatever version or lager that they want, bio and mass, which is fine. But it's the fact folk get a chance to try it in an informal, really, as you say, no everybody's going to walk into the wee beer shop. No everybody's going to walk into Valhalla's Goat or whatever. Some folk would be put off by going to a shop, shop called Valhalla's Goat, do you know what I mean? It's like, that, no, that, we've got to accept there are people out there who wouldn't be comfortable doing that. And I think it's really good that you can take the journey, because that was my first sort of steps. Well, Wheels Brothers was my first sort of steps. I started enjoying the, the Joker and, and I realised that I wanted something a wee bit more than lager because I just used to tan lager, Stella, Tenants, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started on the journey with Joker and whatever else. And then I realised, boom, there's a whole other scene here where things are a wee bit above that, if you will. But you need a price point in between as well. And I think Drygate offer that throughout their entire core range. And obviously the specials are, are up there with some of the best beers going. So I think, I think so Brenny, definitely something that everybody should be looking at. Brenny, you've touched on it a belter there, and I've actually just uh, I've, I've put my foot in it a belter. I'm talking about that mocha job, and it's all in Oka. I'm talking about the mocha, and that's a Williams Brothers, isn't it, Chris? And you've been too uh, to, uh, to collect, correct me on that, but they are in Oka is equally, if not better. Williams Brothers got a steak in them anyway, you've been exactly, exactly. <laughs> I just like to remind me of that. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, give you, give you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> give the wee viewers a wee heads up as well. Uh, I do like the session idea, the Seven Peaks, I like the story with the name with that, name behind the building, etc. I do like that one as well. Very, very 
I'm calling it commercial juice, but it's not even commercial. It's just a well-priced beer. Do you know what I mean? And then, but having said that, we have brought you a not so well-priced, a more expensive one from the lads and lassies at Drygate. And it has been absolutely stunning. So we always ask our viewers this question, Chris. And I'll put you on the spot. Uh, now, you're not allowed to pick any beers from you, Tenant, William Brothers, <laughs> right? Anyone to do with any of you guys, right? So if you could only drink one beer for the rest of your life, and it's nothing to do with you guys, what would it be? Uh, I'm going to go, go classic Belgian. I'm going to go uh, Rodenbach character Rouge. That that was my that was my oof beer. That was my you know first step on it of like oh this there's, there's something amazing going on here. So, How yeah. did you feel? See when you tasted it for the first time, I mean, what did it do to you? Did it just like release your endorphins? I mean, what what makes it so good? Yeah, just completely taken by surprise by it. And they oh I still am sometimes with it, but just processing that that's beer and beer can be that and it just kind of opened up a world of uh, it, it doesn't have to be brown and woody English ale you know super uh, super see because you've been so good with that answer we'll give you another one if you want to name check another one you can do it ah uh, but I tell you what I, I was swithering the, with the two there so I'll go with the dry containing goods as well because oh. I do love a so brilliant uh, do you know, I cannot wait to taste this, uh, this uh, mixed fermentation one. Oh, that's I'm really excited you. about it. I re really can. Um, community aspect, again, I know you're on to promote Drygate, um, but you've obviously, you've name-checked a few people on here. Um, you know, without sitting on your jacuzzi tonight here, Chris, <laughs> uh, which some of the other brewers in Glasgow do, um, is there any other, um, is there any other, any other kind of local guys that you maybe want to just name-check or maybe pass on to us, or even further afield that we should be kind of, the viewers should be looking out for? Do you know, we're, we're absolutely spoiled for good beer in Glasgow at the moment. Uh, I know you had Harry mm -hmm. from Dukit on uh, recently, making some amazing stuff. Um, Epochal, oh. um, who had you come across, Gareth used to uh, run our Brew Your Own sessions up at, up at Drygate. Um, he's doing some amazing beers. I've actually got some over there. Um, Doing, yeah, kind of well for men. He's got his own yeast cultures, barrel aging himself, just just doing everything really, really well. Uh, so, Chris, I can I just say, sorry to jump in, mate. Uh, you know, in Brainy, obviously, we, we, we've got a kind of fund we use for the, the, the podcast beers, but actually, on my wee side fund, I did buy a couple of those <laughs> APO calls. Uh, yes. uh, I'll tell you some man, his social media is fantastic as well, isn't it? His descriptions is fantastic, so I'm glad you said that. Anyone else at all? Um, go ahead and check simple things, and um, I, I've, I've said it before as well, Dead End Brew Machine, uh, I think Chris is making some of the, the best beer, best beer in the country right now. Um, he, it's, there's not much of it, he doesn't make it often, but uh, whenever, <laughs> whenever I see one of Chris's beers, I've got to jump on it, because it's 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 always interesting. It's always it's always something that nobody else is doing. Well, that's what you get when you're on Bill Combrenny's podcast. You know, you don't just get self promotion. What you get is community, and I think Absolutely. you'd agree, uh, viewers. Uh, Brenny, don't know about you here. I don't think uh, Chris could have been more community based tonight. He's been absolutely great. phenomenal, hasn't he? Absolutely great. Absolutely great. Um, Chris, no, absolute I mean, pleasure, Chris, and happy something. Yeah, great talking to you, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be trying to get one every year. I will be trying to get one every year. It's <laughs> not, it's no. not really my, the whole cake thing isn't really my style in the sense that I would love it as a sharer, as I said earlier on. I would love that as a sharer because um, it's a brilliant beer. That is a brilliant beer, but a, a, a small, small measures would suit me better. It's definitely an end of the night beer for me. Listen, if we don't see if we don't like fills for simple things, it's your fault, by the way, mate. It's because that's been good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but the, I said, all joking aside, uh, the, Chris, obviously, it's very rare you get to be in a situation where you've got worldwide media 
social media appeal as you are right now on the podcast. So is there anyone you would like to give a shout out, you know, taking advantage of this at the moment? <laughs> the answer to that is no, no, you're absolutely fine. Uh, but all joking aside, listen, I think we'll agree. Uh, Nightmares of Cake 2021 Imperial Black Forest Gato Stout. Cheers. 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 Happy seventh birthday. So, if you're say, second beer of tonight is uh, from the south side of Glasgow. It's Simple Things Fermentations number 21, Big Idea Series, and it is a golden ale um, coming in at 3.8%. Brady, I'm delighted for that. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> just, just what I need after that 10 percenter. I mean, Chris, Chris and the Dry Gate crew have nailed that 10 percenter, but I'll tell you what, a bottle of it has sent me quite, quite, quite skew with. Exactly, mate. Now, a bottle of that might have sent it to me a bit Lally, which what I love about this, if you look at the website, they describe this as a wee swally. So I went from Doolally to a wee swally. There we go, mate. Doolally, wee swally. Let's get our bad boy poor. Yeah, looking forward to this. The you can get this. Beer. We bought this at the beer shop. Always a wee favourite. You can also get this in a beer shops and a pubs as well on cask. Cheers, Brenny. Cheers, Bobco. Cheers, mate. It smells lovely. Yeah, it does. Do you know it's perfect? It's perfect oh. for, for me. For me, we're in the height of summer, we're at the end of, end of June. Uh, I know I should have mentioned where they were, but, but we're at the end of June. And see the the Black Forest Gato that we just had. For me, that's near. In my head, cake and stouts and porters are all more autumnal and winter beers. That's just my own opinion. This is just my own, my own, my own thinking. I always associate those sort of darker beers with the uh, with the sort of darker ones. So it's absolutely delightful to have. A wee change of pace with a 3.8% golden ale, which is absolutely bloody lovely, by the way, the wee sip I just had there. As indeed. Just going to read a wee bit for the website, which is uh, simplethingsfermentations.com. It pours clear and golden in colour with a snowy white head, sweet and delicately malty at first, with Maris Otter and Caragol providing the perfect base to showcase a floral, slightly earthy, orange grapefruit hop aroma. Mouthfeel is smooth. With the characteristic soft champagne style bubbles of bottle conditioning, then comes a balancing bitterness, and you're laying up your next sip with the crisp, dry finish still lingering in your mouth. Now, I can tell, Brenny, I can tell the Maris Otter with the weight taste immediately, having used that one recently, and it is, I tell you, Brenny, it is, it's the perfect, it's not the antidote, that's not the word, it's the perfect palate cleanser. After that bad boy, isn't it? Yes, yes, it's, it's I mean, that that is absolutely doing its job of being refreshing, but still giving you a, a taste sensation. The bubbles in it, yeah, I get I, that description on the website is absolutely bang on, um, and what you get when you pull the ball is exactly what you're getting told on the website. So absolutely spot on. Malty at first, and then it just starts to resonate with some hops. And mm. it, that, that is lovely, lovely and refreshing. The only and thing I maybe have to dig, dig fill up for the simple things is, man, he's, he's not leaving us all on because he goes on to further, further descriptions. He tells us the whole, if you go to the website, simplefermentations.com, he tells you everything about it. And he does that for every single one of his beers. He's so open. <laughs> That's exactly. I think that's, uh, I think he's, he's he's literally putting his heart on his sleeve and telling you what he's doing. And I think that's great. I think that's great. Um, and especially for people who are not maybe accustomed to trying new beers or, or, or even trying new ranges of beers. I think that's a, this is what I'm trying to do. So, mm-hmm. I think good on him. It's, it's, it's a great policy because I think if you actually read that and you understand what he's what he's done, what he's saying he's doing, why he's doing it, then it makes it easier for you to understand what your taste. Because there is a whole lot in that. For a low-strength beer, there, there is a lot, a lot of taste in that. Mm-hmm. 
And what I love as well on the website as well, he's got a feedback um, page as well. He's getting these whole way, uh, you know, location on there. Um, every single beer, really good prices as well, Brenny. And I'll tell you something, man, it's one of those beers that crops up everywhere in Glasgow, isn't it? Uh, some, uh, just about any bottle shop you go into, even if it's like your boutique bottle shops or your kind of high street bottle shops, you can all, you always get simple things, fermentations, um, which I love the fact that they're hustling. In fact, you know, I think we're going to have to get them on the show uh, at some point. Crossed, fingers crossed, and we'll take the invite up. That'd be great to speak mm-hmm. to them. Because it's okay. uh, a real ple- it is a real pleasure to talk to, especially, I mean, we've had some great brewers on, but it's really nice to talk to the guys in the local area who are do- out there doing their job. And, and it is a job to them, but at the same time, it's something that they love and the passion and just hearing how much they enjoy doing what they're doing. Because that is what it's all about for, for everybody. You know, it's, it's, it's really nice. And as- we, have missed, we have missed doing these. Do you know what I mean? For the last few months, we have. We have, we just have. By, by, for whatever reasons, you know. But it's, it's been a real nice night just to, to get back into the enjoying it and hearing, hearing how much people put into what they're doing and enjoy doing it. And it's nice to actually sit and sample it with them. Don't get me wrong, I'd have preferred that one as a share of that photo. <laughs> <laughs> Because I am absolutely, I, I, I think I think Chris made a great point. He's going to be an end of night beer for me. Oh, uh, I, oh. I think we, I think I, I would agree with that. Because and the irony is, I had a hot flush when I stood up. Mate, they'll all be watching this as well. I know, man. If Phil ever does what you've got, that I'll show them. He could probably come up with a better, a higher strength than you want. But mate, I don't know about you, but I'm ready, ready to score this. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to go with. I'm happy to go with. It's an absolute cracking beer. Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to attempt to describe it better than what Phil does on the website. I think he, he hits every angle of it. Um, so I'll go first if I sorry, right, Bill. Cool. Go for um, it. So. Would I buy it again? Yes, that's a lovely, lovely beer. Um, right about the ABV for the summer. A um, couple of them mid-afternoon before you actually start on going for anything a wee bit more. But a couple of, a couple of afternoon beers with that would be lovely. Um, so definitely buy it again uh, with a session. Uh, that's a session beer. That is a total session beer. You could sit all day and drink that. Um, and I, I dare say, I think you'd wake up the next morning and nobody too bad with it either. Um, so marks out of 10 I'm really enjoying it really enjoying it I'm going to give it an 8.75 out of 10 oh, high scores yeah. high 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 yeah, but I think there's an element of us just being back into this and whatever else but it definitely is a cracking beer that, as, as that, that, as that, as that, as another day I could score at 9.5 but the, I think yeah. after the, the stout that I just had which is blow blown away just with the actual quality of what it was. Um, and having Chris on as well, you're not going to fucking sit and tell Chris and shite, do you know what I mean? And, and, and it wasn't, because you're obviously not going to do that. But uh, I, I, it's, 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 it's 8.75 for me. Good score, big man. So over to myself and I will do, mate, would I buy it again? Yes, I probably will buy a few of these again. Very well priced. Um, the, would I? That's the price point, Bunko. That is the price point. I can't really remember. Price point. A wee beer shop was round about three pound ish, I believe. So Let me just check that. For any, you put me on the spot. While I'm doing that, would I sesh it? Hundred percent sesh that. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a beer that actually tastes a lot stronger than it actually is, which I like. Um, I like that whole. Um, the feeling of the feeling of it being stronger, Aye. Than and then when you actually realise it's not that I three pound bang on the money, mate, at wee beer shop. Uh, l- listen, you might be able to get it cheaper on the website. You might be able to get it cheaper elsewhere, but that's where we bought it. Um, uh, aye, really good sessionable beer, fantastic. Three point was it? Eight points. Three point eight percent. Score wise, I mean after the after the the, the what do you call it the, the imperial there we had there. Sorry, Brian, I'm just fixing my camera. After the Imperial there, I'm not going to give it 9.5, obviously. I mean, the the Imperial Black Forest was a belter. Uh, But I'm still going to be very generous on my scores. I'm going to give it an 8.4, Brian. Nice one. So I think we'll agree. 
Simple Finds Fermentations, number 21, Golden Ale. Cheers. Cheers. So, but anyway, we'll just keep uh, rolling. I've uh, got a couple of things I wouldn't mind saying, if that's all right. All right, back away. Obviously, thanks to everybody for sticking by us. We've actually been up in subscribers, know that we care. We actually have done. Um, I think tonight has proved that we are going to basically bring it home when it comes to getting uh, brewers involved, getting people that want to uh, come on and be talking about the beer and passionate about the beer. Uh, but one thing I will say is that, Brady, I've missed doing this for you and I've also missed the interaction with the viewers. Yeah. Um, so I just want to thank all the viewers for still sticking by. I mean, we're up, to, we've almost got a thousand followers on Instagram, mate. Sorry, mate, I, was, I should have been watching the camera there, so thank you for that. No, thank you. Um, we're actually coming up to our first birthday, as you know, middle of July, end of July, and we want to put together a wee package for people. Um, yeah. we're, 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 I mean, let's not cut ourselves on, Brenny. We're going to put, we're, there's going to be beers on the table, aren't there, mate? Uh, aye, we'll, we'll, we'll do a nice, we'll, we've done a couple of nice wee things in the past, so yeah. guaranteed a uh, uh, Keep an eye on social media, we'll get a wee and uh, it'll be beers, merch, all the rest of it. Hundred percent. Uh, and we're good to our loves. Uh, we we'll, 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 we'll supply what we say, we're going to supply Bilko's modelling the new hats, uh, skip cap, so if you're, you're in need of a skip cap um, and beers, and no doubt I dare say a, a cup of tea will be in there as well. Uh, but I, we'll, 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 we'll have a wee, we'll have a wee, Boost on our, boost on our social media. We have a couple of wee prizes coming up shortly for the first, oh, first anniversary, in it? First birthday. The first birthday, mate. Happy birthday, Brownie. Happy birthday. One coming up. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to get a few uh, special things. We've got special things in the pipeline for that. Uh, but as always, comment, like, share, tell us what you want to watch. Tell us any breweries that you think we should be looking at. You know, get involved. And if you're a brewer looking at this as well, more than help it happy to come on the show. Uh, if you make good beer, don't be shy, because we'll always promote good beer, won't we, big man? Right, always. 100%. Always. Right, always. so I think we've already done a cheers to this, haven't we? Yeah, we have, we have, but we'll do an early cheers to it. So, hey. shovel, shovel things, fermentations, golden ale. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so, third beer of the night. And uh, I don't know about you, Brady, I'm feeling it. Aye, aye, I'm feeling it. That first beer we had with Tris for Drygate, I mean, that's, a, that's an end of night rather than my start of the night. Uh, the Golden Ale is a nice wee relief for you, to be honest with you. Uh, lovely wee, lovely wee adjunct pint of this. It was. So, so, what is this? This is the, the who's this, Basque Land Brewery? Aye, it's Basque Land. Now, we might actually superimpose into a previous... Uh, we might, we might have pelted uh, Basque Land a wee bit more than we should have done before our palate was refined. Uh, but Womper, this is Womper. It's a cryopop IPA coming in at 6.2% ABV. Pops are Idaho 7 Mosaic and Cryopop. It's a DDH IPA featuring the new Cryopop blend from Yakima Chief Hops. Uh, the cryo mix gives the beer aromas of orange peel, lime, even yuzu. That we've combined with Idaho 7 and Mosaic. The result is a beer with no nuanced hop character that retains a significant amount of volatile aromas with all of the right fruit and body of a Basque Land DDH IPA. Right up our street, my man. Cheers. Cheers indeed, mate. Cheers, bud. Cheers. Borderline Bilko in the pole by himself. Mm -hmm. That's a juicy bomb, isn't it, man? That's an absolute juicy bomb. Oh, it is. I mean, that's lovely. That's lovely. You'll give me a hint of that six point two at all. That's oh. just like that. It's a real, that's a real refresher. It's a real refreshing day. Uh, what's the crypto hops? What's that? I don't know how you heard of the crypto pops. What's this? Well, the cryo pop is a new blend, apparently. Of a special hop, so it's came from Yakima Chief. I'm not going to lie, I don't know a lot about it, but I've noticed there's been a few beers uh, creeping in that are using it. Um, the, I, I'm not going to lie, it's real, Brady. This is actually the second time I've had this. I had this on tap at Coal Ship 
Yep. Uh, ten how, does the can, how does the can feel against the, 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 the draft? I'm not going to lie, I thought it tasted a wee bit fresher out the, the, the keg as it would do, but it's still still phenomenal, mate. Um, you're definitely getting the orange peel and the lime. Mm. That's lovely. That's lovely. And that's it. I mean, I don't want to be hijacking people's uh, catchphrases, but it's a juicy belter, mate, isn't it? It is indeed. Absolute belter. So, so refreshing. So, um... I've noticed that all the bottle shops are selling this uh, round about our gaff as well, Grant and Growler, uh, you know, Ma uh, is it Maxwell's, uh, obviously we beer shop, etc. Maxwell's uh, is up, not uh, up Clarkston, wasn't aye, it? Aye, aye. Um, big Uncar that, big Uncar that used to run the Maxwell's at uh, where the wine shop is now on Nifstale Road. Oh, well, well that's, that's, his, that's, that's his venture. He oh, left, he left the... Uh, he left the, the, the sort of Strathbungo, Port of Shields area to go up to Busby, Clarkston. Um, he's got, I think he can sit out of his house. He's got a wee bar set up up there now. Aye, mate. I've seen some pictures up there. Uh, one of our followers on Instagram, Tom Green. Uh, hello, if you're watching this, Tom. Uh, he's up there quite a bit. I have noticed that. Uh, but again... I just want, want to put it through there. We don't just drink down in coal shop. We don't just uh, go. <laughs> there's, other, there's other places you can get this stuff. And I'll tell you something, man. When they're selling something like this, quality, Brenny. I feel mm. as if... Are we being a bit arse kissy tonight? Or have we just chose great beers tonight? We always choose good beer. Hence why we, uh, why we always seem to be reviewing highly. This is a superb beer as well. The Wampa is a superb beer. I'm not going to mess about. Um, but... I I get lost with all this tripo, do you know what? Like, like, I think I think people go mental now for trying to try to just do something, 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 something else. You know, just, I think you're right, Brennan. Brennan, can I point something else out as well? I mean, obviously over the past year when we've been doing the podcast, we learn things. Because we look at the descriptions of the beer before we come on and and the bag down there is Wampa is a DDH IPA. DDH, marketing bullshit, bullshit, isn't it? Dry hop. It's, all it means is double dry hop. All it means is it's been, dry hops have been put in it twice. You know what I mean? I do, we do that, we do that in our own brews, don't we, Bray? You do, I don't. Well, I do. And it's like, I don't call them a DDH, you know what I mean? But it's a wee bit marketing bullshit. Having said that, out of the casket was phenomenal, mate. Very fresh. So I'll go first. So that's all right, big you? Yes, of course. Would I buy it again? I did buy it again. I tasted it on cask and I bought a can out of it. Uh, so I did buy it again. So yes. Uh, would I session it? No, I wouldn't session it. But what I would do is I would try the other one in Subascalan because I think they've got one other one in Mitchell Mosaic, for example. Might have been more up your alley, but any. I couldn't get that for tonight. Um, so I would definitely, I, I wouldn't session it, but I would buy a couple. Of different types. Um, the score wise, it's not, uh, I mean, it has to be looked upon completely differently from the other beers that we've scored tonight. Um, so I'm not going to look at it I, I, as, a, as a cryo hop IPA, probably the first one I've tried. Uh, it will score highly, but compared to the other beers we've had on tonight, um, well, it's not going to score highly. Um, I'll put it just, I'll, I said, I'll give it a solid, I'll actually out of the can, I'll give it a solid 7.9, but out of the cask, Brenny, a couple of weeks ago, I'll give it an 8.5. So, so a 7.9 out of the can, all right? Buy again, session. Mm. Yep, buy again, session, yep. Yeah, yeah, I would, no, I would buy again, all right, I did buy it again, yep. but I wouldn't session it, what I would do is look for other ones. From Baskerland. It's okay. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I, 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 I did pick that up, but I didn't, didn't fully get that. Hey, okay, so for me, would I buy again? I actually quite like it. I, it's not sort of fucking marketing bullshit around it. Uh, I do actually quite like it. Uh, would I buy again? It depends on what the price point was. I can't really remember. Um, I do think it's probably overpriced for what it is. It was expensive, mate. Aye. Aye, so it's six point two percent. There's no, uh, there is absolutely no hint of the six point two percent. By the way, 
I mean, that's not, I mean, it's juicy. It's, it's a juicy, juicy, hoppy belter. Um, <laughs> for me, buy again, I need to look at the price point. I think it is expensive. So if it's expensive and it's kept terms at a 440 mil can, I would make a decision and probably go with something cheaper. Um, but would I session it? I'd get a good go if I'd got a chance to. Um, and it was at a decent price point. So again, sort of tied in. Um, and scores, I actually quite like it. I do quite like it. Um, and I'll get an 8.25. Good score, mate. As I, I knew you'd like it's it. It's a nice beer. It is a nice beer. But I think there's, holes, there's so many other things going on with it. Um, I think there is a... There is a... Uh, would you buy... Again, you probably buy one and then share it. Do you know what? You try it. And from that point of view, is it sensible? Ah, if you're doing it that way, do you know you're... But the reality is, we're buying cans individually, we're doing it via Zoom, do you know? Would you sit down and session that on it? No, you're not. Mm -hmm. um, but you would, you would in a different environment if you were getting two thirds or a third. To, you know, you'd have a few. So, so sorry. Oh, but, to be, to be fair at the price point as well, I'm on the Baskland website at the moment and it, it, they're, they're selling it for 24 euros for a four pack and it is out of stock. Um, so it's, you know, it's not overly so priced. Okay. Yeah. But you got it, I got, I got two thirds of it in kosher and it tasted so much better at the keg. Do you know what I mean? If that makes sense. Mate, and on their website, Six euros a can, mate. Mm. Anyway, we'll give it a wee cheers. Anyway, aye, aye, I'll stick by what I've said. I'll stick by what I've said. A big cheers to Baskerland. It's a cracking beer. Cheers. Cheers.